he saved. All right. Um, now, composition. Before I get into composition, actually, I'm going to go to some quick um, perspective tricks. So a lot of people, uh, when they first start drawing, you know, people tell, you know, uh, teachers basically say, you know, stick to your vanishing points, um, make sure everything lines up exactly. Um, reality of it is, yes, you should have those things, but you don't have to follow it exactly. I mean, like, if you sat there and like tried to, to do the perspective lines for every single window in a building, you're never going to finish your drawing. So um, I think it was uh, Todd McFarlane given a, a podcast on this stuff where he, he ran into um, um, George Perez. And George Perez, he, when Todd McFarlane was first starting out, he goes, oh my God, you're drawing in every single perspective line. He's like, well, what, sh what else should I do? And he basically showed him this, and this is where I got, this is where I learned this information. Um, I hit the ruler button here and set up my um, vanishing points and you got your vanishing point here it's just like straight up old school perspective and um, but as, as long as you have a general guide to these vanishing point the vanishing point you put down several lines like this you can pretty much guess as long as you keep everything within the grid don't let things cross over lines you should be able to crank out a very clean looking building or a, a building that will work just fine in, in the background of something. Let me get my uh, okay so straighten out this horizon line put my vanishing point back where it was. This is what's cool too about Sketchbook Pro. You have a ruler tool which will allow you to um, basically set up vanishing points and just it traces everything for you. So I got my other vanishing point I got my building with rough, like quick um, uh, vanishing points, or uh, sorry, uh, quick perspective lines on it. So I got my front like this. So now I'm just going to basically draw in so my windows just with the guides and not really worrying exactly where every uh, where to put the line. Um, so basically just kind of sketch things in like this and of course if you're if you're drawing a if like the main focus of the of the image is going to be a building um, then you probably want to use a ruler but here as you can see I'm just basically roughing in where I think things should go according to the lines I put down then you know in the background in this the perspective lines could be just put down with like a red colored pencil or something like that you got these other shapes and stuff um, you're just kind of playing off that grid you lay down so you don't actually lay out all of the perspective lines for each item so you got your basic street here real quick real rough but just shows you that point um, one trick if you are a stickler on trying to get everything to look perfect, <clears throat> there's a trick to give you perfectly um, uh, spaced out windows. So you got your line here, is your horizon line, and I'm going to start the window, uh, the wall here and there. Okay, so let's say I want this wall to be perfectly cut up in equal uh, sections. Real easy trick. All you do is take your ruler, you put your vanish one uh, end at the very top corner, and then you put one at the bottom right hand corner. And you go like that. And then you uh, find the, uh, the halfway is it the halfway point? Yeah, the halfway point of the uh, of this of this line here. So the half line halfway point is right. Let's say there, just for sake of conversation. Um, 
trace that there. So, um, actually, this diagonal line, we don't need that right now. <laughs> Let's erase that. Okay, I forget I said that. All right. Got your ruler. Let's say you want panels this size all the way down. All you do is take the ruler on the upper right hand corner and then you uh, intersect this point right here that you made. So basically you have your, you have your wall and then you have the halfway point which goes down to pr same perspective line. You draw an angled line to bisect that spot where you want your panel to be and then you do it again and then you just repeat that process. So I'm going to put the point up to the upper left hand corner and then bisect the new halfway line. You got a new spot there. There's another wall. And you just do it again and then your your wall is going to be perfectly broken up into the same size panels. Again, this is like I was saying, most of the, most times I just eyeball this kind of thing, but if you really want it to look perfect, that's that's the trick. Um let's see if I can remember there's another trick to get exactly the same um oh yeah, that's okay, this is why I do that diagonal line before I I got it mixed up with this other method. So let's say you want exactly four windows on a wall to fit perfectly. What you can do is draw your horizon line and your wall and you want to break this up in four equal parts. So the the constant here, no matter what, is going to be this wall or this wall back here. But the angle is what's varying. So with a ruler, and I I don't have a ruler on this machine so I'm going to eyeball it. I'll go break it up in uh so with a ruler you would notch out exactly this looks about like four sections here, one, two, three, four. Okay. So then once you have that rulered out, you're gonna draw the lines going down like this to the vanishing point. And this is why I did that diagonal before and this is where I messed up. Um you want to take a diagonal from the upper left hand corner to the bottom right, draw it in there, and then you just, wherever that line intersects those uh, latitude lines, you draw a, a vertical line. And you have four perfect walls. All right, so we have these different perspective techniques down. Um, some of the do's and don'ts that I got uh, told from editors and things like that, teachers, you name it, um, were some awkward, look out for awkward tangents. So I think this is really important when you're coming up with a composition. Let's turn the, let's bring back bird slug. All right, here's bird slug. Okay, we're gonna shrink him down a little bit. And let's say we want to put him in a frame. So I'm gonna draw a frame what is that? Oh. All right, so I'm gonna draw a frame on a different layer. And let's say this is a comic book, or let's say this is a you know just a um a page. One thing to things to look out for is let's say it's your character. Right now, obviously, he's looking like he's a little close to this edge on the right, and he's a little close to this edge. So I would give him some breathing room. About like that, right? Another thing to look out for is tangents, where if you had the beak touching the wall, it looks like he's kissing the wall. If you have the tail hitting the wall, yeah, it can come off as he's stuck to the wall. Or if you really want him to look like he's coming into the, the, the frame, cut him in a spot where there's no like joint. So right there is a, a nice spot, I think, if you... um. Cut out. Well, let's put up another frame so we can see it better. What the heck? It's a weird 
tool. Okay, I'm gonna black this out so you don't see anything. <clears throat> there we go. So um, he's not he's being cut at a spot where there's no joint, basically, is, is what I'm saying. Um, an example, a better way to kind of describe this is with a human character. So let's make a real quick human character. Um, so if I got a person here, and he's waving, okay, awesome. <laughs> so he's going to go into the frame. One thing to look out for is basically dismembering the person, A. Figure A right here. Don't let his head get chopped off. Don't let feet get chopped off. Don't let elbows get chopped off. And I would say try to avoid getting hands chopped off. Um, if you're going to have him pop out of a panel, make it like obvious. So we're going to bring him down, let's say, to here. That's fine because he's not being biased. he's not being cut at the elbow. He's not being cut at any other major point. Oh, actually, let's move him over here. His hand got cut off. So his hand's clear. His head's clear, all that. If you want to chop them, normally when uh, I crop pe uh, people uh, in frames, I try to crop them in these spots. Uh, let me get a different color. <clears throat> all right, so I try to crop him here, here, not at the knee, but like here or here. Uh, there's good. Um, and here's good. But like I said, avoid watching the, <coughs> avoid cropping at the joints. So let's take this guy, undo all the red, <coughs> and let's put him in a composition with a slug. One thing that makes a that helps to make a powerful uh, composition um, is foreground, middle ground, and background. 